Share Shootout brought to you by Lion of Africa Insurance, ensuring South Africa's future. Welcome back to Share Shootout right here on CNBC, first in business worldwide. Before the break, Levan and Mark gave us each of their picks, and uh, we got from uh, we got from Levan Gopal this evening. Redefined properties and Pan African resources. Redefined was accepted, and Pan African was shot down. Mark Ingham with Met Air Investments, it was shot down, but AECI was accepted. You look at those uh, those two picks. Would you would you switch your allegiances at this point if you had that option, Levan? No, I certainly wouldn't. Uh, let me say the Metair story, I maintain, has got a lot of risk associated with it because it's R&D. So there's no guarantee that you're going to get any sort of return. And as we've seen with a number of, of R&D spends, you could be burning billions. Uh, and the difference is with, let's say, a gold play, whilst there is massive risk, it's a different sort of risk. You're, you're taking a, a gamble on the gold price, possibly on the rand, but you could hold on to that gold in What your is the stock best performing share on the JSE of the last 10 years? It's a very difficult question. I'd okay, say the uh, old it, ISCOR stable. Okay, absolutely wrong, I'm afraid, because what the best performing share on the last 10 years is Pinnacle Technologies, a return of 25,000%. It was a 15 million market cap company back in, uh, what year are we in, in 2003 or thereabouts. And, and now Pinnacle Technologies has given a 25,000% return. 10,000 Rand investment then with 2.5 million Rand a day. You don't get rich without taking a few risks, Levan. And uh, R&D is the basis of sustainable wealth creation, whereas digging dirt out of the ground <laughs> isn't. <laughs> I think he makes his point. Uh, Levan, Le um, you, you stick to your guns and I'm proud of you on that particular point. So let's get to your third pick this evening. Um, and it's... Oh, I, was, I, I nearly gave away Mark Ingham's uh, because his is particularly courageous. You're going to look at the hypocrite in just a moment, somebody who says that he's got to put your money where your mouth is and then he's got to hit that pick. We'll find out about that one in a moment. I'm interested in why you're taking a company that has had probably a most spectacular run in the IT sector for the last two or three years and you still think it's got lots of legs. EOH. Yep. EOH has got almost 2,500 uh, clients and whilst uh, that's a, a very good uh, risk mix in terms of uh, software, in terms of, of other services, their income uh, is probably likely to continue growing from even more client acquisition. Uh, they've got uh, a half a billion cash on the books, which could be used to either grow them organically or to look at new acquisitions. And I've recently read that uh, they're looking to put on board another 400 employees, part of their BE plan. Okay, there we go. Your, your 30 seconds are up. Marking him quite a hard one to shoot down. Are you going to do it on politics or on principle? On principle, in fact. There isn't an IT company in South Africa worthy of the name. There's no apples in sight. Um, and in fact, they're glorified box sellers. There's very little R&D or uh, anything that's remotely a sort of original. So they're fairly, you know, low margin roll ups. Um, and therefore, it doesn't meet my criteria of high barriers to entry and the sort of um, uh, investment criteria that would give you sustainable long run returns. Okay, but I mean, to be fair to the pick, and you call them a bunch of box movers, that's fine. But if they've got the contracts and they are the guys who are moving the boxes, that's quite a high barrier to entry. They've been very acquisitive, they've made very clever acquisitions. The people they acquire become disciples of EOH. I think this is a bit more special than you suggest. I would not agree with that and we've seen some examples of spectacularly run up IT companies in the last number of years. Are the, box, are the box packers like Yes that exactly <laughs> I heard the same arguments uh, a dozen or more years ago with Die Data and uh, I'm afraid nothing's changed. Okay has, has something changed? Yeah for me uh, it's a continuing uh, space of importance within the globe so IT I think has a very firm place within the global marketplace they've got South African customers international customers so you've got that mix of, of technology, they're also able to pass on the price to clients. So it, there is a markup business, sign and seal contracts, uh, and they've got escalation clauses built in. I think the cash on the books is important. And they'll be able to uh, buy decent businesses, 
at the right price. But they're buying, they're a, they're, at they're a then buying their growth, Mark Ingham. And that, again, it's a story we've seen before in the IT sector. You start running out of legs in your current businesses, well, you buy the next quick grower. And you mentioned the staff, but they walk out the door every day. So, you know, that asset uh, isn't exactly a tangible one either. So it, it really doesn't cut the cloth with me. Okay. So I'm, a, I'm afraid you're being shot down on EOH. I'm surprised. I thought you might like it. But I like his arguments. He's feisty and furious, and he's wearing purple. <laughs> Mark Ingham, your final pick is one that alarms me somewhat. I've always seen you as a more stable kind of individual. Why Pumalela? Well, if it had stayed with GG's horse racing, it would be out of business now. Thankfully, it's still in horse racing, but diversified dramatically. Uh, we're into different sports now. And the interesting thing is it covers 35 countries. 62% of Inca now is from overseas. Terrific round hedge. And it's in fact bringing South African product abroad and overseas product locally. Well managed too and cheap. When, Good last, yield. when last did you go into a betting shop? I've, I've uh, been to Turf and Team and I've scoured uh, the less salubrious parts of uh, what they do. Um, and uh, side to me. Uh, and, 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 and there's a dark side. Um, <laughs> but, but, but when you look at it and you look at the market that, uh, that participates in that kind of gambling, is it a growing market? My impression of it is from far away is that it is a little bit of a, an older market that sort of goes outside, has a bit of a fag, sticks the head through the door to watch the horses um, and may not be around for as a sustainable market. for the Bruce, horses. that's a very valid argument, but they've had explosive growth ar around the world and that's where it's coming from. And gambling is a growth industry, whether you like it or not. It's a sin industry mm. and they're firmly in it. But it's a well-controlled sin industry, very strict parameters and it is government regulated. Um, and you saw overseas income up by 62% mm. last year and we'll be seeing significant growth again this year too. Where, where are the big growth markets for them? Um, well, we're seeing in the Isle of Man, for instance, very big. That's a centre, uh, if, if you want to believe it or not. Mm. Um, we're seeing it um, in, 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 in Aussie, we're seeing it in, in Europe too. Um, and we see it increasingly in Scandinavia. So they're breaking into different world markets that previously have not been broken into. It's a, com it's a bizarre concept, isn't, isn't it? it? Um, Levin, do you like the Pumalela gaming, leisure and gaming model? I like the cash flows. There's no horsing around about that. But <laughs> when you compare it with competitive gaming, um, so you're looking at tables and slots, uh, and I think that the casinos have given them a run for their money. On that score, you've also seen the lotto coming in and stealing a slice of horse racing uh, income. Online casinos have further taken a chunk out of their market. But we don't so have online casinos in South Africa, no, for example, that, that's because that's a regulatory issue yes. here. Sure, that's changed more recently, but uh, if you go back uh, five or six years, that was a but big aren't, threat. But isn't Pumalela through that sort of hump? if you like, um, in terms of it fought those battles, it's restructured its business, it is now that global business. That's why business. it's still in business. Um, and it's, it's precisely because it saw the lottery, precisely because it saw the gaming tables, and it's providing an alternative to going to Monte Cassino of a Saturday night, bless you if you do. I'm of the view that it's probably something from a forgotten era. So I think the new gambler is probably looking at something that's a lot faster. Uh, the glamour of horse racing is probably fine at the July or once or twice a year. I don't know if they'll be able to show a sustainable income. Also, looking through the calendar year of 2013, there's likely, likely to be less disposable income. Eskom increase. Okay. Uh, uh, so petrol you, price you increases. You, all, all of that, but you're shooting it down. Yeah. You're shooting it Let's down. Let's shoot this horse down. <laughs> oh, no, you're so vicious. He gets the finish line and he's the guy who would happily put the old nag out of its misery. I think he's wrong, by the way. I'm not a big fan of gaming myself, but I buy the argument, which comes to the point in the program where the person in the middle always loses. But before we kick Levan out, <laughs> uh, let's explain why we're doing it. And it's not just because Mark Ingham is playing politics and wearing purple. Um, a quick look at what uh, Levan uh, chose this evening. Redefine properties, good for a, a good cash generator, a really good yielding stock. Uh, Mark Ingham accepted that with open arms. Pan-African resources, uh, the least offensive of the gold companies in South Africa in terms of, of having a bit of a flutter in the gold sector. However, says Mark Ingham, it, it, it's a no-go zone for him. And EOH Holdings, I thought he might like it, but he talks about it being a die data style glorified backs pocker, a, a backs pocker, <laughs> box packer even. Um, and it is one 
confirmed that he is shot down. Uh, Mark Ingham uh, chose Metair Investments, mercilessly shot down. AECI was accepted. AECI, says Laven Gopel, is a very good pick and it's one that he likes, but he really doesn't like Pumalela Gaming and Leisure at all. A market cap of 809 million. It's a miracle that that business is still operational, but it is still operational and still has legs before we make any bad horse jokes. It is time now to make that final decision. You're in the middle. The person in the middle never wins, Levin. You didn't wear purple and you shot a horse. You're out. So Levin Gopal then goes to the obscurity of the SABC board for the next six months as he tries to restore some kind of public faith in a troubled public broadcaster. That's all we have time for this week. Congratulations to the reigning champion, uh, Mark Ingham from Ingham Analytics, whose picks this evening have stood the test of the share shootout. Remember, catch me on Twitter and give me your share shootout suggestions and your thoughts on at Bruce Business. Catch us again next week, same time, same place, as we continue to pick winners and shoot out the rest. Good night.